First, I'd like to thank God for baptizing as a Jehovah's Witness. And uh, Michael was very spiritual. I believe that he was. He was. I know he was spiritual. He respected all religions, no matter what your God was. But he, um, he just, he thought that there was more out there. And he used to talk about how beautiful the world is, and we used to talk about God a lot. Um, <clears throat> he used to just like marvel at everything. He did have the ability to travel extensively, and he did perform for some of the biggest and most important audiences in the world in their home regions. So he was able to see firsthand, along with his brothers, what we're actually dealing with and what we don't see on the news in America. He helped a lot of people. He helped different countries, different continents, different cities. And he shared his money with charities and poor people, and he helped a lot of people because he studied the greats, um, like Fred Astaire and Sam Davis Jr. There were many that he loved, you know, Sam Cooke, James Brown, Jackie Wilson, Marvin Gaye, Dinah Ross, Gladys Knight. When he was in the Jackson 5, he used to follow after James Brown. He used to watch James Brown. He told me that he used to watch how he moved, how he moved his body to, like, dance. And he said that is one of the main things that inspired him to do the moonwalk. In, in that moment when he appeared in the Motown 25, special and unveiled the moonwalk. He was so spectacular in people's eyes that he almost seemed like he was a you know, new form of, of, of life. And he was certainly a new form of, of entertainer. I had never seen him perform like that before. And I had heard he'd been working on this one routine and just blew everybody away. And I think that's one of the greatest performances that Michael's put on. He was top of the line to me for the industry. And he set the bar so high <laughs> as far as creativity was concerned, as far as performance was concerned, as far as respect for your audience is concerned. Um, all of those areas, he gave an awesome work ethic for those who chose to be in the entertainment industry. I was like, wow, I wish I could do that. He, was, he promised me he would teach me how to moonwalk. Never got around to it. He was a good dancer. He was a very good dancer. Well, let's see, Michael had a lot of philosophies on creation and art. must have an amazing beginning that we've never seen before. It must have a middle that is unexpected and blows your socks off. And then it must end in a way that has them passed out in the seats. And if it wasn't that, he was not interested. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in Billy Jean. I'm like, I can't explain how unhappy I am with you because you could be so much more. There's mm. so much more I want to do. And, but I, I didn't have the chance and the time to perfect it the way I want to. But I was dissatisfied, you know, with my performance because I wanted to do the spin and to stay on the toes yeah. longer and to freeze on the toes. Any song that he made, he wanted to be perfect, even though man isn't perfect, but he was like a perfectionist. He wanted everything to be right. He sweated every detail, you know, even when he didn't have to, in my opinion, but he did. You know, he cared about every single detail. And um, I think that's what really separated him from a lot of artists that I've worked with in the past. He's working when other people aren't working or thinking about work. He's just one of those type of people. He lived what he did. He loved it that much. From the time he was a child, he was made to get it exactly right, or it was considered a failure, and he actually would get punished for it. I got to the point in my life, like the off the wall, where I said, I have to make the biggest album of all time. I said, I, don't, I just don't want to make an album, but this song has got to be the best. He used to write on his mirror. Michael would put on a mirror, I'm going to sell 30 million records. And Jackie used to look at it and say, he's crazy, you know? And, not 30, 40, 45. He had sticky notes all over the place. If he found a quote, like if it was someone he liked, like um, I remember he had this, he had a bunch of stuff from like Muhammad Ali or something, like very philosophical stuff that said peace and all that. He always would post it up there and just remember it and always look at it. He had pictures, he'd have sticky notes, drawings, lyrics for a song all over the place. He made believers out of everybody, record people didn't think it was possible. 
he would invest his personal money into videos to make take them to the next level. When other when the company would say the budget is tight, you have more, no more budget for you. He would kick in another whatever it took to make the video great. And that's what made him different. He believed in himself. And one of his greatest talents, he felt, was being able to tap into his higher power and let the art flow through him. So you have to credit his spirituality and his upbringing, you know, with that awareness on that level, and especially in his creative process. Approach it like you don't get another chance. You know, history, he would say that a lot, you know, we're creating history, let's create history. At the time, MTV didn't play any black videos, and we had this great video by Michael Jackson, uh, and I think it was uh, Epic had said, if you don't, can't play Michael Jackson, you can't play any of our artists. They had to play. It was the most popular music videos that had to be on there. It was being played everywhere else. They're showing thrillers on news broadcasts. And from that point on, they started playing black videos. The very first black video that MT played was a thriller. He changed the video industry. People don't think about these things. He started doing movies instead of just something you walk out of your house and stand on the porch and sing a song. He changed the music industry, the whole thing. But then once he achieved the success that he did with Thriller, you know, the maximum degree of success, he felt the expectation of his fans and the rest of the world to do even better to make something even more perfect. I said, how are you gonna to top Thriller? You can't do that. <laughs> Cause I thought it was very good too. He said, you just watch me, I will. Record companies wanted him to record so that they could sell a lot of records. So here came the Bad Album right away. That album should have waited a while. Thriller continued to sell. When you're selling that many records, I mean, Thrill is, whew, goes in the museum. How many albums go in a museum? It took a big toll, so he had to find a way to fulfill that hole within himself, i.e. Neverland. Where I feel that Michael um, went overboard was where he was buying things to buy them, his, could afford them, the possessions, that he had. I'm the type of mother that never wants her children to go. And, um, and Michael was finally ready to move out. And I just felt so bad. I just, after he left, I really cried. But um, I never let him know I did that. With Michael Jackson, there was a method to the magic. You know, uh, I think that, you know, a lot of his fans know some of these things. But, you know, it just, it continues to impress me that he had really created this environment where he could be the best artist he knew he could be. Yeah. I'm gonna meet you guys over there, okay? What? You go a while on the train? So you guys, I think you're taking that train back there. So I'll meet you over there. He had kind of like a zoo, basically. He had giraffes, lions, he had uh, alligators, and I think crocodiles, and he had snakes, and all kinds of cool animals. You probably heard of it, but he had a chip named Bubbles. And that was a fun place. It was a place to go and just relax for the day. Uh, made you feel that you were totally away, just away from craziness, civilization. Children have been uh, so much inspiration for everything I've done. Uh, I think everything comes out of that level of innocence. Even Spielberg or Lucas, you, you look at their work, they create on that level of pure, purity, you know, and, and that's where I get all my inspiration from. Uh, I, mean, I, think, I think it'll always be that way. You don't find people like that today that care. You just don't see it. And, and the funny thing about it, when we have someone like that, we want to look deeper and, and say something is troubled about this. That's all he was trying to do was show them something different. He tried everything he could try, helping little kids, cancer, and, and he was, you know, 
entrepreneurial. He was so many things, but it just wasn't enough for everybody. Great feeling to have, you know, a kid in the room. It just feels so magic. I could be around them all day. I mean, they come over to the house all the time. I have them over. It's like they energize me. They give me power and all that stuff. Michael, it's now my great pleasure to present you with a check for one million dollars. This represents the money Pepsi-Cola pledges to raise in Europe this summer with our best wishes for Heal the World. I mean, time after time, whatever else people want to say about Michael Jackson, he showed he was willing to give. You know, again and again and again, he would give all of the earnings from a, from a tour to charity. You know, we would go to areas in the world that he felt would benefit from him doing a show there, meaning income for the workers that can help benefit their families, their children, you know, and hopefully um, improve their way of life, even just for the week that we're there. <laughs> you talk to people who would see him land in a, some city around the world when he was on tour, go straight to a hospital to, to go into a burn ward or go into a um, a ward where there were dying children, and the and the effect that he had on kids and his willingness. But people who saw him with those children said, you know, I mean, he could look in a dying children's eyes, look right into their eyes, and make them feel so seen and so alive in that moment that it it, it was transformative. He's so incredibly moved by stories on the news uh, about displaced people or you know, folks who are suffering in any particular region. He didn't know these people, but if the TV was playing in the studio and he just saw, you know, something on the news and it touched him in a way, like, it would stop rehearsal. Like, he was that sensitive and in tune to other people's problems. And I think that, you know, that also allowed him to write such beautiful songs, you know, because I think he would call on these, um, you know, memories or experiences that he had and, and translate them into just really, really poignant art. And the arrests of known terrorists by law enforcement agents in 38 countries. Given the nature and reach of our enemies, we will win this conflict by... Hi, Celine. How are you, Michael? Oh, I'm good. I'm so happy you're part of the project. He cared for, like I said earlier in the interview, he cared for people. He cared for others. And he did things that other entertainers start modeling their things after. And that was important. Somebody's got to be a leader. And he was one. Michael was visionary? Absolutely. See, Michael sold those songs. He didn't just record them. That's a, diff that's a big difference with some artists that just sing it. You know, Celine Dion sells her songs. When Michael Jackson um, called, I was in a recording studio, and um, he called and he asked if I could join and, and be part of the What More Can I Give, uh, a song that he, that he just wrote. And um, I, I didn't even think about it. I mean, first of all, I was very fortunate that he called and asked if I could join and be part of this. and. Um, I mean, in a situation like this, you don't even think about, am I going to do it, um, I'm not going to do it, or is it a good... You just do it. I think Michael knew and felt that What More Can I Give was, it was certainly the best song that he'd done in years. And part of the psychology of Michael at that point was that he wanted to do things that he generated, that were his idea. That, because that felt inspired to him. Anything that wasn't felt like work to him, and it reminded him of being that little boy who was you know, awakened at 3 o'clock in the morning to go you know, perform in some club. So he just felt as if it was one thing after another. He couldn't, he couldn't get this song out to people. So I think he felt that they just won't let me do this. And, and it became a, you know, a real angst for him. And he was able to assemble this celebrity choir, uh, people who were willing to, to overlook the pariah status that Michael had sort of been in ever since 1993, um, and, and work with him on this. And it was really a you know, remarkable uh, assembly because it, was, it 
it was across so many ranges from from uh, uh, pop and soul and and rock and and country and and uh, uh, and it was fascinating I think for him and it is fascinating that that uh, he was able to to mesh and be completely comfortable with all these genres, all these artists, and just relate to them as artists. And it was, it was moving too to see that they related to him as an artist, artist to artist. He can use the strength and his power that he has to call upon anybody in any type of music and say, would you come sing a line? And we say, yeah, because we know where his heart is. We know that if it's if it's that important to him, by golly, it must be very important. And we all agree with him 100%, and that's why we're here. He was very famous because of all his hard work and all the stuff he did. He seemed to dance and help people. So that's why people looked up to him and stuff. He always listened to like the, the latest hip hop radio, just to hear what was going on with music. And he'd call somebody up. Well, he'd have me call him up because he doesn't like know how to use a phone. And he would just call him up and t tell him that he wants to start working on a beat like this. He'd get a beat like like at 12 o'clock in the morning, wake me up and say, we have to make a beat. And I'd set up the computer for him and we'd make something. Michael expressed himself through his music. You no, know, he was quiet. He kept to himself. You know, all you have to do is take a look at the interviews that he did. Then all people had to do was listen to his music and that's the best interview you could have gotten from him. Singers, when they sing songs, it's like a mantra when you repeat a chorus over and over and over. So when a kid hears a song and he starts singing that chorus over and over and over, then you start to hear it in the alpha state and to the subconscious mind. So you start to become the song or become what you're saying. Me, I believe that it was the way he wrote his songs and his lyrics about things that people could actually relate to. And the way he just danced was something that nobody has ever seen before. So now I understand why they looked up to him. It changes people's hearts. His music had all kinds of, like, different types. And he had the sad songs and the really active songs, so that's why. And he helped the world a lot with, like, cherry and stuff. So that's why people looked up to him the most. He would take iconic sort of ideas, like the military and armies, and he would say things like, you know, Look at the strength and the power in that. What if it were all for good? What if it all served a positive purpose? You know, what if it was all strength and, and joyous and celebratory as opposed to always so dark and so much bloodshed? The, that kind of thinking was always front and center with him. I like it. If you could just give me one more for, on the word love, for a little more compassion, it's just a little softer. He had really worked on it, threw himself into work on it, like he hadn't in a long time. And he didn't want to go back on stage and, and sing and dance, really, except for maybe some special events. But this he considered important enough, and he was inspired to do it, and people who were working with him told me, you know, you just had to drag him into the studio normally, but now it's like he was, all, he was there ahead of us. He wanted to do this so badly. It meant that much to him. Oh, you did. I loved it. All right, let me do it again. I can do it again. Okay. All right. We loved it. We're going to save it, though. Okay. Okay. That was smelly. He ruled with a soft hand and, you know, never made you feel, you know, any less appreciated, even if you made a mistake, you know. Um, he would always was just so nurturing, and I think that that was really, you know, one of the things I'll remember the most. You know, you felt empowered around him. You knew that he wanted you to be amazing. And that was really, really cool. Thank you, Michael Jackson, for writing such a beautiful song. What more can I give? And I want to thank him for asking me. It's a great honor. Thanks. You got, you got it. it. Good deal. Beautiful.